Hi, and welcome to the 5-Minute Business Boost, where you get to choose your 5-Minute Investment. I'm your host, Sam Hicks, and I'll be discussing topics under the headings of business development, marketing, photography, and much more. So buckle up, buttercups, and here we go. Today, I'm speaking about a passion of mine and noting five quick tips and tricks for the ultimate guide to securing grants for -for not-for-profit organisations in Victoria. I wrote my first grant out in about 1990. It was a small local government grant and the organisation I was with were able to give me some basic tips and tricks, you know, knowledge about the organisation and the project. And really it was simple. It was just five questions, a demonstration of community need, money amount needed or nominated, a support letter and submit. How easy. Now, back in those days, it was all done on a fax machine. If you don't know what a fax machine is and you're a young listener, you might have to Google that one. But it was archaic compared to today. How grants have changed. Most grants these days are all done online. And reminders to fill in the sections as you progress through the application help. You can save and close and come back later. And you do get reminders on the email about, hey... Your grant deadline is fast approaching. Smarty Grants is an Australian grants administration system and standard for most lenders or funders, however you want to put it. And while sometimes I think the application is a little clunky, it is now fully automotive or automatic once set up. The fun fact, the platform is an ISO accredited under the 27 001-2002 code, and that's the world's best known standard for information security management systems. And I actually like that because you are putting details up about your organisation. You know, ABN, okay, you can search that up, but financial information sometimes is required to make sure that, you know, you are trading and you are solvent and all those things. Now, hopefully you remember all that, you will be tested. I can also remember the first grant that I didn't get. I was devastated. But in the end, I learned so much from that knockback. Yes, I rang them. And I found out why, or we, were unsuccessful. And really, it got down to an alignment of goals, not reading the criteria, and not forming a relationship with the funder. Three major wake up calls. So, learn from my experience because that was three early lessons that I have never, ever forgotten. Today, after 32 plus grants submitted, a success rate of about 99.9%, with another 10 thrown in that have been co written and 30 draft submissions given to me to read and critique, all adds up to the realm of about five to ten million i think it's actually more than that worth of dollars grants and community development are a real happy place for me i've seen firsthand what grants can do to small communities the impact of the outcome ticks so many boxes bringing the community together to improve facilities and capitalizing on local change and development along with that increase in social capital because you never know who's out there in the community until you approach somebody and say listen i'm with this group and we're thinking about writing a grant can you offer me some advice or some feedback now i haven't done it alone i'd love to sit here and say yeah it's all me but it's not In the early days, it was a successful grant application that I stalked. Okay, so probably too harsh a word, but I followed this group's journey, learned from the creation of the dream. I watched how they did their community engagement and how they went about gathering evidence for the application. Then, of course, the application I wouldn't have seen, but I saw the media saying that they'd got the grant. And then I saw the outcome, the success, and I was hooked. Up in the northeast, Sandy from Grantable was a huge help in my early community development for one particular project because her ability to critically assess the application and the business case was just amazing. So that's a side tip is actually finding somebody that can be a critical assessor of your program 
critical assessor of your grant application, you know, your draft that you might do in a Word document. And another additional tip is to find your Mrs. Red Pen for checking grammar. I am shocking. I slaughter the English language and I'm proud of it in a way, but my grammar is shocking. And I know there are apps like Grammarly and stuff, but having an objective point of view is valuable because not only do they check the grammar, but they might say to you, oh, what about this or what about that? And it's great because it's feedback, but it gets you to strengthen that verbalization of the product or the program um, that you're trying to get funded for. So seek out those who are English teachers. Retired writers are brilliant. Anybody who writes a blog or loves grammar, So they're the people that you need to find. Now, let's get cracking. My five top tips. Tip number one is the importance of aligned values with a funder. This is vital. I cannot emphasize enough the significance of aligning the values and mission of your organization with potential funders. If you're looking for alignment, make sure you have strategies for researching and identifying funders who share similar goals and objectives. Explore this. Discuss with your team about the benefits of establishing a strong partnership based on aligned values and how it can enhance your chances of securing grant and also how it will enhance their ability to be able to share money in their community for projects such as yours. Now, insight. No need to apply for an aquatic grant from a banking institution if you don't bank with them. Food for thought. Tip number two, read the criteria for funding. This is also really vital. You need to read, reread, highlight if necessary, and get others in your team to read through and thoroughly understand that criteria outlined in the grant applications. If you're not sure, reach out to the funder. Don't be scared to ask silly questions or seek out a frequently asked question website page that might be associated with the online information about the grant. You know, if they've got um, info nights or webinars, attend, listen, learn about them. You're better off to get that clarification early than to waste days of your life applying for a grant when you end up in the early rejection pile in the process of seeking who to fund and who not to fund. Think about, that's another inside tip, think about who's reading your application. Make it easy to read, very clear. Don't have fluff and bubble. That's one thing I learned from Sandy from Granable. No fluff, no bubble, just pure facts. So you need to effectively interpret and address each criterion to maximise your chances of success. Sometimes I select the text from a grant application document and create a physical checklist of all the criteria just to make sure I'm ticking all the boxes. Tip number three, working with stakeholders. Now this is a huge point and I see so many people fail badly at this. You need to understand the importance of building relationships and collaborating with stakeholders. They've all got something to bring to the table. So this includes community members, volunteers, local businesses and other organisations and can extend to your suppliers. Think about it. Anybody that engages with your organisation technically is a stakeholder. Share strategies for engaging stakeholders in the grant application process to demonstrate community support and increase credibility. This needs to be highlighted, the being the significance of partnerships and networks. This in turn can enhance your grant application. The more groups that can be brought to the table, the far better the local outcome, the more community impact your application will have when it's successful and acquitted. Now I can hear seasoned grant writers groan and volunteer boards going, oh my God, more stakeholders, more work, more communication. Pish tish. This equals more outcomes, more long-term friendships built and more opportunities. Tip number four, getting great support letters. This is so vital. The role of support letters in grant applications is a huge part of the engagement with your stakeholders, with your community, with your target market. And this gaining of support strengthens your case. Brainstorm early 
who they might be. You need to identify them, have a bit of a list and be very professional when approaching individuals or organisations to request support letters. Many times people leave it to the day before, that's harsh. So make sure that that is a early identifiable task early on in the grant application journey. You need to be able to share tips for crafting persuasive and impactful support letters that effectively convey the value in impact of your project. Draft up a suggestive format, include points that they can use or embellish on. Make it easy for the person writing the support letter. I write hundreds of support letters and the ones that really get me going are the ones that send through an overview of their projects, some photos, a couple of testimonials, and then the impact that this project is going to have you know if is it a niche market is it going to affect the entire region what are the outcomes sought so you need to enable those points and those positive outcomes for whoever's writing your support letter to understand your project and craft the ultimate support letter you don't want to see 10 support letters with the same three paragraphs in it just don't do it to yourself it doesn't work Tip number five, verbalising your project or concept. You need to explore the importance of effectively communicating your project or concept in grant applications and beyond. Discuss techniques for crafting and compelling narratives that capture the funder's attention and conveys your organisation's vision. Share strategies for presenting your project in a clear, concise, persuasive manner during meetings and presentations. Remember Sandy's advice, no fluff no bubble. Look at the comments or feedbacks from objective trusted outsiders as further ways to strengthen your project overview. Many years ago we created a road show for a community project I was working on with a diverse team. So armed with a PowerPoint presentation I presented our concept to many community groups and the feedback was gold. This feedback shaped our future grant, shaped our future vision and direction for the organisation. Their testimonials, either verbally or via a simple one-on-one video, enabled us to demonstrate the community need for the overall project and I think got it over the line. So don't be scared to talk it up. Seek community feedback and be prepared to tweak your original concept. I hope that helps and good luck writing your grant. If you want a workshop on grants, reach out. There's myself and about three or four other ladies right across the northeast that do and provide and supply really cool grant networking opportunities and workshops. Until then, cheerio. Thanks for listening to the 5-Minute Business Boost. For more information, follow me on social media, sign up for my newsletter, or check out my website to see how we can work together to reach your small business goals. And remember, anything is possible, especially in northeast of Victoria. Till next time, cheerio.